Hi everyone, we're going to be looking at those words from Hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 to 4. You may like to have that open in your Bibles or on the screen, uh, whatever you have available there as we go through. This is the first of our Advent sermons as we come up to Christmas this year. And I think the idea that Mark had uh, with the, the Advent sermons this year is to think about how Jesus is more than just a baby. You know, through the Christmas period, um, I think people often come to come to the church, they look at, you know, the, um, the baby Jesus and it's all very cute and, and nice. But actually, you know, we need to think of Jesus as being more than just a baby. And that's what we're looking at today, how Jesus is, is more than just a baby and, you know, why we should listen to him. Now, listening is important, isn't it? Um, I think before we listen to someone, we often need to know the reason for listening to them, their credentials, if you like. Uh, a few uh, few weeks ago, I took Lydia to the opticians. In fact, as I'm recording this, I'm taking her back to the opticians later on today. And one of the nice things about going to the opticians, when we go into the office there, have your eyes tested, you can see up on the wall all of the um, certificates that the optician has got. You know, he belongs to the this college and he's got you know this degree or what have you and it just gives you a bit of confidence that when you go to the opticians he is someone who is worth listening to at least when it comes to to your eyes and and that's the thing that you know we'd like to know what someone's credentials are before we listen to them you know we're all busy we we need to know who it is that we listen to well Hebrews chapter 1 tells us what Jesus's credentials are. You know, he's more than just a baby. Um, this is what Jesus's credentials are. So Hebrews chapter 1, it begins, in the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in uh, various ways. But in his last days, he has spoken to us by his son. So he says, in the past, God spoke by the prophets. In these last days, he's spoken to us by the Son. So there's a, uh, there's a contrast that he, he, he starts out with. Now, this isn't supposed in any way to diminish the, um, uh, the prophets. Now, this isn't trying to say, oh, the prophets, they weren't really speaking from God. You know, God did speak. He truly spoke through the prophets. But it's saying that, you know, they were prophets. Jesus is is a son and that's far more significant the son of god is far more significant in a sense than, than the prophets you know the prophets were prophesying about jesus at, at the end of the day and the fact that jesus is the son of god is a really significant thing because you know who someone is the child of really matters doesn't it you know a few years ago um Lydia is now uh, seven years old. Seven years ago in 2013, she was born. And in that same year, Prince George was, was born, the son of William and Catherine, Prince William uh, and Catherine. Now, um, when, when Prince George was born, he was born in the July of that year. I remember that we were on holiday at the time. And uh, when he was born, there were reporters outside. There was a press outside. They were crowding around, trying to get a picture of the baby, trying to find out what his name was, all of those kind of things. Three months later, when Lydia was born, there was not that same kind of, um, you know, attention for us. You know, we just went into the hospital and no, there were no reporters outside or anything. And they were both cute babies. But this is the thing. It wasn't it wasn't the, the cuteness of the baby that was important. It was whose son it was or whose whose child it was that was important. And this is the important thing when it comes to to Jesus. He's the son of God. That's why we should listen to him. So the fact that he's a son of God, it, it gives three, um, there are now three sort of um, reasons. There are um, three credentials that being the son of God gives him, which means that we should, we should listen to him. So the first one is that he's the ruler over everything, the ruler over everything. So it says here, um, uh, verse two, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom also he made the universe. So the heir is sometimes used in the Bible as being like the, the owner. Um, and that's, I think, what, what's happening here. You know, Christ is the heir, the owner of everything. And he created everything. You know, through him, everything was, was made. He made the universe. And that's something which is very different to the prophets, isn't it? You know, the prophets, they just spoke 
about God. They spoke about Jesus, they prophesied, but Jesus is the one who made everything, through whom everything was made. And, um, you know, one of the, the things about about God that's so fundamental to understand that we must come to understand if we don't already is that God is kind of separate from creation. There's a distinction between the creator and the creation and Jesus is on the side of the creator. He's different, unlike the prophets who were created. So um, that's the thing, you know, first thing is Jesus made everything, you know, wouldn't you want to listen to the one who made everything? That's credential number one. Credential number two is that he reveals God to us. As it says uh, here, the sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact rep representation of his being. So, so the radiance of God's glory, what does that mean? Well, glory, I looked this up in the, the New Bible Dictionary and it said glory is a revelation of God's being, nature and presence to us. God's glory is a revelation of God's being, nature and presence to us. So it, it's revealing something about God to us, revealing who God truly is to us. That's God's, God's glory. The Bible says that the universe reveals it to an extent. You know, think of Psalm 19 verse 1, one of my personal favourite psalms. But, you know, it starts out by saying that the heavens declare the glory of God. You know, the world shouts out and declares God's glory, his splendour, you know, how um, unbelievably vast it is, how, how enormous the world is, how beautiful it is, all of those kind of things. It shows God's power and his splendour. So, so the universe reveals something of God's glory, but his glory is ultimately revealed in Jesus. One of the things, one of the verses that we, we often have at Christmas time and um, I think it's, it's one of these verses where I think uh, familiarity can breed contempt a little bit because you know, I think we so often skip over it and don't really ponder uh, what it means. Is, uh, is uh, Luke chapter 2 verse 9. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. Think about it, you know, the glory of the Lord shone around them. Think about what it must be like to be in the, the presence of God, to see God's, God's being, his, his splendour, majesty, all of the, those amazing things. I think it would be a terrifying experience, actually. And uh, we so often sort of skip over that. But when Jesus was born, uh, it says that the glory of the Lord uh, shone around and we see God's glory and we continue to see God's glory in Jesus. And Jesus is also, as it says in Hebrews, the exact representation of his being. So Jesus reveals God to us. Now, when we look at Jesus, we see God. This is what it says in a, another passage, which we often have at uh, Christmas time. It's in John chapter 1, verse 18, which says this. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God and is in the closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. So no one has ever seen God, but Jesus who is himself God and is in, in the closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. So when we look at Jesus, we can see God. We can see what he is truly. And the Bible is very clear. There is no other way to know God other than through Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth and the life. You know, no one comes to the Father except through me. Uh, that's what Jesus said. So that's the second reason, the second credential, that Jesus truly reveals God and uniquely reveals God. Unlike any, any other person, anything else, no one else um, does it. Only Jesus reveals God. OK, credential number three is that he sustains everything. And this is what it says, he uh, sustaining all things by his powerful word. Some people have this picture of God as being you know, the one who kind of lights the blue touch paper and you know, the universe kind of 
there's the Big Bang or, or whatever. And then God just takes a step back, has a back seat, and you know the, the universe just kind of carries on like clockwork, regardless, just obeying the natural laws of the universe. And all God did was just get involved at the beginning. That's not what the, the Bible says Jesus does. Uh, yes, he created everything, but he sustains everything as well. He, he controls the events of the universe, including your life and my life. How does he do that? It says he controls uh, sustaining all things by his powerful word. It's the word of God. And it's interesting, isn't it, you know, how we've come full circle. It started out with saying God spoke. And now it's saying Jesus sustains all things by his word, the word of God speaking. When God speaks, things happen. Now, when Jesus speaks, things happen. So that's why we should we should listen to him, because God's words, because Jesus's words are powerful. Now, they're not like human words. Think of someone like King Canute, you know, King Canute wanting to prove that he wasn't like a god, just sat on the shore and tried to rebuke the tide and, you know, uh, and it didn't work, did it? You know, he just got wet, wet feet or whatever the legend says. But God, Jesus, on the other hand, you know, when he was out on the water and there was a storm, we saw this in the children's um, story last week, the storm that stopped. But when Jesus got up in the boat, there was a storm. He just said, be still, peace be still. And the wind and the waves obeyed him. That is the difference between Jesus and between any mere human being. Now, when Jesus says things, they they happen. And uh, his word is powerful. So that's why we should listen to Jesus. Reason number three. I'm not going to really deal very much with the the last couple of verses there. I just want to mention that Jesus, it said he he came to provide purification for sins. And after that, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. And it's really essential to understand that Jesus came to provide purification for sins and that his work, when he sat down, it means that his work is now finished. So that's all part of of what Jesus came to do and it's an essential part of what Jesus came to do and it's understanding who Jesus is involves understanding him uh, providing purification for sin. So as uh, we have this this Advent series as we look to uh, as we look to who Jesus really is, you know, more than just the baby in the manger, but as we look to who he really is, let's, let's not leave Jesus in the manger. Don't leave Jesus in the manger. Remember that he's the son of God. Remember that he's the son of God. Remember that he made and he owns everything. Credential number one. Remember, credential number two, that he reveals God to us uniquely and exclusively you know no one else does only Jesus truly reveals God to us and reason number three credential number three is that he sustains everything you know the whole universe the events of our lives all of those things are are in in Jesus's hands so we should remember that and we should look to Jesus so what should we do what what difference should this make to us now? Well, uh, I think there are a couple of things that I would suggest just as we just as we draw to a, a finish here. The first thing, if um, listening to Jesus, if understanding who he truly is, is about listening to him, listening to his words, listening to what he says, then we need to pick up one of these, a Bible. We need to read it. We need to understand it. We need to to get as much of it as we can. And that's why in, in this church in Great Clacton that we make sure every, uh, every time we meet you know, in, in a service that we have a bit of time, you know, having um, a thought about God's word, you know, even if it's only a short one, it's just uh, uh, helps us to understand what God wants to say to us. You know, we focus on that, we think about it. That's what leads us to God and what leads us to Jesus to help 
Help us to know the one who who sustains all things by his powerful word. And we hear his words when we read the Bible. If maybe you're thinking about starting to read the Bible, then I know that on the Ask a Pastor series on uh, YouTube, T has done a few videos about getting to to begin reading the Bible. There's a what what book of the Bible should I read first? What's your favourite book of the Bible? Um, I've contributed a couple of uh, bits and pieces to that as well. So do have a look on our YouTube channel for the Ask a Pastor series and um, look at you know getting getting going with reading the Bible because there are a couple of videos which will help you to get started reading the Bible for yourself. The other thing which I wanted to mention, which is also important, is don't stop at uh, reading the Bible. Now, to understand who Jesus is involves more than simply reading or listening, but actually putting it into practice. This is what Jesus said at the, the end of the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 27. He says, therefore... Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundations on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell with a great crash. There's a great children's song about this, actually, which um, we we sing sometimes with the the little ones, but um, we won't do it now. Um, But the the point is, though, that it's about not just hearing the words of Jesus, but putting them into practice as well. And that's that's what it means when we really understood that Jesus is more than the baby in the manger, but is the son of God. Then we'll not just listen to his words, but we'll put them into practice in our lives as well. Don't just listen. Put them into into practice. And I'd just like to finish by asking you the question, do you know this Jesus? Do you know Jesus as not just the baby in the manger, but as the Son of God, the one who made the universe, who reveals God to us, who sustains all things by his powerful word? Is that the Jesus that you know? Because if it's not, then take some time, especially as we come up through this Advent time, through Christmas time, take a moment to to get to know Jesus, to to come to church, to listen, to find out more. Perhaps sign up for uh, our course in the new year, thinking about getting to know Jesus and uh, what it means to follow him, because you won't regret it. Let's take a moment to pray now and ask God to help us wherever we are. Heavenly Father, we thank you that Jesus is uh, your son, the one who... Um, through whom you created the universe, who reveals you to us and who sustains all things by his powerful word. We pray that you would help us to listen to him. We pray that you would help us to not just listen, but to put it into practice as well. We pray that wherever we are, um, this Advent, this Christmas time, that you would help us to see Jesus as being more than the, the baby in the manger, but as your son, the one who rules over everything and who can be the ruler, king and friend in our life. Please help us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.